like, dude, I'm just trying to vibe out right now. He weaseled his way into living in her house, her new house that she was only living in for like two weeks. And we're back with another monthly TBR. Full disclaimer, March sucked. I only finished two books in March which is crazy for me because I know some people read like 15 books a month. Some people read one book a month. On average, I read five. So me finishing two books, it's a little bit different. I wasn't expecting that, but I've just been in a reading slump and it's so annoying. That's why I had to throw all this extraness in this video for you. Like I'm going to do my little wrap up, whatever the two books, then I'm going to talk about my current reads and then we're going to talk about my delusional tbr because if you watch my february wrap up you saw i had this big old tbr and we only ended up reading two books that weren't even on that tbr but whatever without further ado let's get into the video okay so the first book i read this month was happy place and i don't know why i started off the month with this book knowing that i have this weird relationship with emily henry books like i hated beach read i loved book lovers so i was thinking i don't know maybe this one might hit i don't like uh, I wish I didn't even start with this one. I DNF'd. I had to think about it for a minute. I was like, did I even finish it? No, I DNF because I honestly just didn't even care what was going to happen with the characters. I didn't care if their friendship lasted. I didn't care if the main couple got back together. I didn't care about any of it. And it wasn't that the book was bad. It was just like, I will never forget with that one person. It was, I think it was someone on Twitter, maybe TikTok. I don't know. But someone said, the only way to like an Emily Henry book is if you can connect with the main character. I didn't connect with now one character in that book so this book was just a no for me and it's like i i feel like if you could vibe with the characters you would probably really love this book because the writing wasn't bad the storyline wasn't bad it was actually like cute seeing the little group of friends and then seeing like how the main couple they still got feelings for each other and stuff but you know life just life and it got in the way oh i didn't even tell you what the book is about okay so this book is about um harriet and win is, there, is that their names? Harriet and Wynn is the main couple and they broke up a while ago, but their friends don't know that. So then they go on this weekend trip to this cabin that they go to every year. Like it's the friends like special place or whatever, but it's their last trip to the cabin. So Harriet and Wynn, I don't feel like that's their actual names. Am I making that up? Who is Harriet? I don't think her name's Harriet. Whatever. Harriet and Wynn, that's what we gonna call them. Um, because it's the last trip to the cabin, they don't want to tell their friends that they broke up because they don't want to ruin the trip. They just want it to be something memorable, something nice. So they fake like they're still together. I don't know. I couldn't relate to it. Never been in a relationship, barely have any friends. So nothing in that book connected with me. So I just DNF'd. It wasn't bad. It just wasn't for me. Next, I read One More Shot. And this book I was so excited to read because I read the first two books in the series, the Flights Are Flights series. Is it called Flights Are Flights? I don't know what anything's called. But yeah, the first two books of the series, I honestly really enjoyed. So I was like, okay, I'm really excited about this one. I've been waiting to read this one since November. This book was originally supposed to come out in November and then they pushed it back to like, I think in about February or something like that. And you know, I was a little hesitant to read it because one of the people I follow on TikTok, she said she gave it a 3.5 and I trust her review. So I was like, hmm, 3.5, the rest of the series has been like 4.5. That's a little weird. I ended up doing nothing this one too. It was just, this book made me realize maybe I need a break from romance because it was just so like, hmm, it was just mm, like, it was just so like, okay, we know the predictable plot, how it's going to end up. So let me tell you what this book's about. So it's about this guy named Dane and this girl named Elliot. First of all, her name being Elliot, not gonna lie to you, I really love that because I've never heard of like a girl being named Elliot. So the entire time I was reading it, I was like, I really like that. Dane is the best man at this wedding that Elliot, who is a photographer, she is, you know, photographing the wedding or whatever. But basically the sister whose wedding it is, she is telling Dane because she sees he's kind of like flirting with Elliot and she knows that he's kind of like a player. So she's like, no, stay away from her, please, because I really want her to be my wedding photographer because she's amazing. Little does the sister know they actually already hooked up before and it didn't end well. So now it's like they're re-seeing each other and they still kind of have like a connection, but they can't do anything about it. You know, like I was in a play out, you know, it's like, oh, they're going to keep running to each other, especially since they got the wedding to go to. I'm pretty sure this would have ended cute because I think the wedding's like in Italy or something. I don't know if it was me or the book. I mean, the girl on TikTok, she did say she she gave it 3.5 so maybe it's not just me but this book was just okay it wasn't intriguing and since i was already in a slump i wasn't in the mood to read just an okay book so just to be clear happy place and one more shot they're not bad books 
I just wasn't in the mood to read something that wasn't going to be five stars because I'm trying to get out of this reading slump. So yeah, I ended up DNFing this one too. So actually, I didn't complete any books in March. Wow. Now, let's get into my current reads. Okay, I'm going to talk about this one really quick because I'm not even sure if I want to finish this one or if I just want to keep it pushing. I'm reading Remarkably Bright Creatures and the book is not bad. It's not bad. It seems like it's going to be interesting, but it had I'm like 35% through. It has not grabbed me yet, so I'm just kind of like, hmm, do I keep going? Because I'm trying to get out of the slump and this book doesn't seem like it's going to do that for me. But like the plot seems cool, it seems whatever. So I'm thinking maybe, you know what, maybe I should put this one on pause to come back to it yeah we're not even gonna talk about this book whatever let's get to the other book that i really want to talk about disappearing acts if you follow me on tiktok you saw me talk about this book because this girl said if you watch the 52 part video of the girl saying um who did i marry you're gonna love this book i didn't watch the whole 52 part thing i didn't watch any of it but i know that it's a crazy story so i was like okay you know what i want to read this when i tell you i think this is gonna be the book to put me out of the slump the only thing why I didn't finish it yet. I've been reading it for like two weeks. The only reason I haven't finished it yet is because I haven't had time. If I had time to just sit down and read this, this is going to pull me out of the sun. When I tell you this book makes me so angry every single time I start reading it and not angry in a way like, oh, it's bad. It makes me angry in a way it's like when you like a book so much and things are happening and it's just pissing you off. So this book follows Franklin and Zora, right? So Franklin is a bum. He's a bum. It's no other way to say it. I don't care how you, if you read this book, I don't care what way you look at it, which way you turn it. I consider him a bum. So Franklin um, basically weasels his way into Zora's life because Zora was doing good. I'm not going to spoil anything for you, but I just got to talk to you about this book because this book is stressing me out. Zora was doing good with her life. You know, she um she graduated college. She had her little finances together. She had her goals set up. She had her plans set up. And all of a sudden, Franklin, who ain't got his own place, he don't got nothing of his own. He got kids he he he's married still you find that out in like the first little part of the book so that's not even a spoiler but it's like he weaseled his way into living in her house her new house that she was only living in for like two weeks he weaseled his way in and then all of a sudden zora's life turned to trash like lily she had her savings together she had her finances together all of a sudden she ain't got no money now she in debt now she's stressed out now she getting cussed out on her birthday mistreated and it's like the part about last night, she was like, oh, I'll be home at 10. First of all, girl, it's your house. Why are you checking in with that man telling him when you're going to be back at your house? I don't know why you're saying home. It ain't his home. Anyways, she was like, I'll be back at 10. She didn't get back to one because she was like, oh, I was having fun. The music was good, yada, yada. So he going to basically say something like slick remark, roll over in bed and be like, yeah, I bet you had fun. I bet you met someone. And then he rolled over and went to sleep. First of all, Zora is better than me because I would have turned over and said, oh, you got an attitude? You got an attitude outside this door. Like, how you going to sleep in my house, in my bed, and then have an attitude and question me? It's my home. I get home whenever I want to get home. <sighs> Last night I tabbed something because I haven't been tabbing the parts that have been irritating me. I don't know why, but I haven't. It said the phone rang, right? So her phone is always ringing like her friends or her like family's calling or something. He said he don't even answer the phone anymore because he knows it's not for him. So he just let it ring. And he waits till she get up and get it. You in my house, the least you can do is pick up the phone and say, hold on, Zora will be to the phone soon. I don't know. This book has been... And, uh, the way he treated her on her birthday, I'm not going to say nothing to spoil it, but he, he treated her so bad on her birthday. Like, she asked to do one thing. He got an attitude. He just... Uh, he, and then he's like, I think this is the definition of love bombing. I'm not 100% sure what love bombing is, but it's like when they do one big thing for you and then they keep holding it against you. They're like, well, I did this for you. How are you going to say I don't love you? Dude, if you loved her, you'll leave her alone. You're ruining her life. This is also a movie. And I told myself before I started reading, I was like, okay, once I finish the book, I'm going to watch the movie. I don't know if I can put myself through that. Reading the book is already too much trust. I don't know if I can put myself through watching an entire one hour, 30 minute movie. I may give myself a heart attack. I think I might finish this one off in a reading vlog because when I tell you my reactions to this book, every time I read something, I have to close the book and I go on a rant because the way she has this man treating her, are you crazy? And the way he think he can just come up and treat her like that, is he insane? I don't know. This book, it honestly taught me everything I don't want in a relationship. And I'm not even 50% through yet. So I just know it's gonna be a wild ride. So I may finish this off in a reading vlog because 
yeah i think this is gonna put me out of the reading so like you see how happy i'm talking about it? i haven't felt this way about a book in a while so yeah disappearing acts i recommend it even though i'm not finished i'm still gonna recommend it to you so far the book is really good okay now let's get into my delusional monthly tbr and i feel like as a reader you need to be delusional if you're not delusional what are you doing like that's just it makes it fun i know i'm not gonna read all these books you know i'm not gonna read all these books but still let's talk about them and act like i am and i probably only read like two or three out of this let me not be optimistic i've been in a slump all year i'll probably only read two out of this entire pile so whichever two you think i should read just let me know and some of these might be a repeat from last month because i still really want to read them so we're going to talk about them again like i haven't talked about them before i want to read a dawn of onyx i don't know why i just really want to read this book i just really think it's gonna be good and it's romanticy romanticy usually always hits for me like i don't think i've ever read a bad romanticy book if disappearing acts doesn't fully pull me out of my reading slump I think that this will because it's romance so you get like a journey you get a little romance story because I don't think I could just read play, like plain romance anymore because this brand acts is not like plain romance I think it's more like woman's fiction I would categorize it as that like it has romance in it but I don't think the romance is the main plot I think seeing how they grow and develop together is the main plot but we're talking about this book and then book two already came out so if I really like it I can just hop right into book two and speaking of hopping into book twos I think I'm finally gonna read Iron Flame like the whole reason I didn't read it yet is because when it came out everyone was talking about oh it seemed rushed oh it's not good oh it's this is that I don't know I'm gonna be the judge for myself I can't take other people's opinions I have to judge it for myself because book one I absolutely loved it like I think fourth wing was the first fantasy book that I honestly and truly love that was the first enemies to lovers that I truly love like no that book will forever hold a special place in my heart so iron flame even if it's not as good as fourth wing i still need to read it for myself and vibe out and figure it out so it's in the oh this better not be on you know, 700 pages wait a minute uh-oh oh uh. are we really gonna do that are we gonna be optimistic let's be optimistic because if i like a dawn of onyx we're gonna do for not not fourth wing we're gonna do iron flame because once i read a good romanticy i want to keep going so yeah if I read a Dawn of Onyx, then I'll read this. I really hope I get to this because I just want to hurry to read this one. And next, I talked about this book last month because I really, really want to read Giovanni's Room. This is a classic. I've heard nothing but good things about this book. And it's like, it's so short. It's under 200 pages. And the only reason I didn't read it this month is because I did pick it up. I picked it up and I read the first two pages. And because I was in a slump, when I read the first two pages, I was like, oh, this is a book where you actually got to think. And I know that's something crazy to say, because it's like reading but i don't know i just wanted to read a book where i didn't have to think about nothing i just wanted to vibe out i knew that this would not be that type of book so i did push it off but i think i'm ready to think again that sounds insane to say but no that's just the way i felt like i don't know he the first two pages he was on a train in paris talking about how lives will change but everything will still be the same that was two pages in i was like dude i'm just trying to vibe out right now but yeah i really want to read giovanni's room this month and hopefully i can read it in like one sitting because i feel like if i read it in one sitting it's gonna be five stars because that's how it was when i read the book assembly that book is so good if you haven't read assembly read that book i should do a six star read video but yeah giovanni's room definitely want to read it this month and then next i'm probably definitely going to read this one because i'm going to listen to it on audio i want to read what is it called a love song for Ricky Wilde or a love song to Ricky Wilde. You know what I'm talking about by Tia Williams. I want to read this book because I read Seven Days in June and I enjoyed it, but it wasn't a perfect five stars for me, but I think that was my fault. It wasn't the book's fault. I think it actually deserved to be five stars, but I read it when I had a migraine. So I couldn't fully submerge myself in the book. So yeah, looking back on it, it was probably my fault that I gave 4.5 because that probably deserved a straight five stars. I have no idea what this book is about. Like, I don't even know the plot. I'm just going to jump into it because I feel like Tia Williams is just one of those authors where you can just jump into it and most likely you're going to vibe with the book. I think that this is just a romance. Oh, I did say I wanted a break from romance. But you know, since this is an audiobook, I don't think it really matters. So yeah, we're going to read um, a love song to Ricky Wild or a love song for Ricky Wild you know what i'm talking about but yeah we're gonna read that book this month hopefully i really get to it next hello beautiful i have been talking about this book since i got it i just think it's time that i finally read it and since i'm in a mood to kind of step away from like just straight romance i think me getting back into my lit fic era is just gonna be everything 
because you know what I noticed when I look back on the books that really like hold a special place in my heart and really change me they're usually like literary fiction books so like literary fiction contemporary fiction historical fiction so I'm just like why not read something like this because 99.9% .9 sure this book is gonna change me it's supposed to be like um a play on little women like not a play like not a play with a script it's basically inspired by little women basically maybe kind of not maybe i saw it somewhere in the book but yeah i've never watched or read little women so i don't even know what that means i don't know what that entails but yeah i just love the cover and our, oh i gotta show y'all my book haul not in this video but in another video i'll show you my book haul i ended up buying another book by her when i went thrifting and yeah so if i like this one i'll read that one not immediately you know i won't read it immediately but it'll be higher up on my tbr but yeah we're gonna finally read hello beautiful i want to read atonement i saw a tiktok months ago it was like probably honestly it was probably a year ago it was a clip of the movie atonement i've never seen the movie don't i don't even know what the plot is of this book honestly i really don't but i the little sister was with the guy who i'm pretty sure is the older sister's boyfriend or something like that i don't know but the little sister was with the guy and they were at this lake and the little sister said if i jump in would you come and save me he said of course and he turned around he was like putting on his shoes or something and the next thing you know he turned around she's gone he said what this man ran in shoes on shirt on pants on everything jumped in went and saved her then the clip cut off so i don't know what happened after that but i was like what and it's like i get that that's like the little sister there's no like romance between them or whatever but i was just like what let someone come and jump in and save me I know no one's going to but still i was like oh i really want to read the book and then i ended up finding it at a thrift store like a week later so yeah i finally want to read atonement because after i read it i want to watch the movie now people said they hate the little sister she does something that just makes everyone hate her and i don't know i'm ready to vibe out i'm ready to be angry i don't know and last but not least i finally want to read chain gang all stars i did attempt to read this in february like i because i was listening to it on audio i listened to about like 30 minutes of it and i don't know for some reason i wasn't into it it didn't seem bad but i just was into it so i wanted to wait so i could fully appreciate the story because i'm pretty sure that i'm gonna love this freaking story so i'm finally gonna read chain gang well let me not say finally gonna read it because for all we know this book won't be read till december i want to read chain gang all stars i really don't really know I, someone said it's like a prison version of squid games so that just interested me right then and there and i really like the cover i like covers where they're like really vibrant like that and stuff but the first 30 minutes of the book that i did li like listen to it was really good so i'm excited we get to read chain gang all stars but yeah these are a few of the books that i plan on reading this month and hopefully i actually get to them that is two four five seven seven we know that's not gonna happen okay tell me the three that i really should like read that's i should just put high on my tbr and then remember to include a love song to ricky wild and chain gang all stars like tell me out of these seven like which one should be the highest like the top three so I can just really focus on those. But everything else, I don't know. We're just going to vibe out and we're going to get to it when we get to it. That is it for this video. Thank you for vibing out with me. Thank you for reviewing my pathetic TBR with me. Talking about my current reads and talking about my future reads that I probably won't get to until the end of the year. But yeah, you know, as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for vibing out. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And I'll see you next time. Bye.